The wobbly effect that you hear, with pitch changing ever so slightly, is called wow. A faster change in pitch is called flutter. The irregular movement of tape, record or film causes speed fluctuations, which in turn cause pitch fluctuations. Excessive fluctuations are unpleasant, so it's important to measure them to evaluate performance of audio equipment. Before measuring the irregularity of playback speed, it's necessary to ensure that the speed itself is correct. On the record player, you would adjust rotation speed using markings on the platter. When illuminated by a strobe light, the markings should appear stationary. On a tape deck, you would use a tape with test signal recorded on a high quality machine. Here I'm using a cassette with a 3 kHz test tone. When played on my Walkman, the actual center frequency is 2965 Hz. The tape is being played slower than normal, which is within generally accepted tolerance of 1.5%, either up or down the nominal speed. To measure wow and flutter, use the same test tape or record. The pitch fluctuations are measured relative to the center frequency established on the previous step. These fluctuations, formally defined by International Electrotechnical Commission as undesirable frequency modulation components, are also represented as percentage. For example, if there are abrupt bursts of modulation, say 40 Hz higher and 40 Hz lower relative to the center frequency of 2965 Hz, then the wow and flutter would be expressed as about 1.35%. This formula is correct only when the fluctuations occur exactly 4 times a second, or with 4 Hz modulating frequency. This rate has been established experimentally as the most objectionable. If the rate of the irregularities drops to 0.8 Hz or increases to 20 Hz, the irritation coefficient is half. By the end of 1960s, five standards for measuring wow and flutter were in use internationally. The standards are based on almost identical weighting curves, but differ in choosing of the test frequency and, more importantly, meter indication. The weighting characteristics define not one, but four response curves – unweighted wow and flutter, weighted wow, weighted flutter, and weighted wow and flutter combined. Specifications for playback and recording machines usually provide a number corresponding to the combined weighted wow and flutter. This response curve is skewed towards lower frequencies, that is, it's more sensitive to wow than to flutter. Frequency fluctuations are measured depending on their intensity. One method is to use a quasi-peak or weighted peak detector. The quasi-peak detector gives higher weight to a longer impulse. Here, impulses on each graph have the same amplitude and the same frequency of 1 Hz, but the duration is different. Impulses shown on the right graph are longer, causing more gradual decay of meter input, which produces higher meter output. Quasi-peak detector never exceeds actual peak values and can misrepresent the signal. A strong but short spike may be left almost unnoticed. Averaging detectors used in GIS and NAB standards flatten the peaks even further. The method employed in the GIS standard uses a 5 second measuring cycle time instead of 1 second for CCIR, IC and DIN and measures root mean squared value instead of quasi-peak value. By the end of 1970s, the American NAB standard fell by the wayside. The IEC, CCIR and DIN standards became more homogeneous. The GIS standard remained in use by Japanese manufacturers. So the industry effectively converged on two standards, European and Japanese, the major difference between them being the indication of measured value, quasi-peak or root mean square. Before the digital age, wow and flutter were measured using analog meters like this leader LFM39A. Its smaller buttons are described as follows. Use this switch when measuring overall wow and flutter components contained in the measured signal. Use this switch when making measurements of weighted characteristics in according with JIS, CCIR and DIN specifications. Use this switch when measuring wow components up to 6 Hz. Use this switch when measuring flutter component over 6 Hz. If you want to measure the same parameter that is usually provided in technical specifications of cassette decks and record players, we need to use WTD, not W and F. Nowadays, everyone who owns a computer can measure wow and flutter of their Walkman, cassette deck or record player. Download WF uh, GUI developed by Alex Fried. It's a free wow and flutter meter. Its user interface is just a single window. First, select the test frequency, 3000 Hz or 3150 Hz, depending on the test tape you have. 
Choose Weighting Curve from the drop-down box on the right. The choices are Unweighted, Wow, Flutter and Confusingly Dim. This last option should be called Weighted Wow and Flutter and it is what you should choose if you want to compare your measurements to the numbers provided in equipment specifications. As you remember, IEC and DIN use 3150 Hz tone, while TCIR and JIS use 3000 uh, test tone. But in reality the difference makes little effect on the measurements. In fact, the program reports measurements using both DIN and JIS methods simultaneously. Both measurements are weighted. Sometimes they are reported in literature as WPEAK or QPEAK and WRMS respectively. If you like pretty graphs, you can turn on the save log option and then load the resulting log data into a spreadsheet. This graph shows the WRMS value numerically being about a half of peak value. This relationship can be tracked through specifications for different machines. So what is the highest value of one flutter that you are willing to tolerate? Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.